if you, for example, bought a car and you were just given the car, meaning it cost nothing, mm -hmm. and then the seat belts didn't work and the airbags didn't deploy, you'd have no recourse because the car manufacturer would say, well, hold on a second, I gave you a free car, yes. right? Yes. If you bought milk, you can expect it to be pasteurized. If right. you're given milk and it makes you sick, you have no recourse. So similarly on the internet, we have to ask ourselves, if you are not paying for something, you are probably part of the product, not the consumer or customer. Do you think these people are normal? <laughs> Do you think they're like, ho-hum, I'm whole, let's be friends and have a burger? <laughs> That's not what, that's not what these people are. Yeah. Okay. They're not, no, they're no. deeply, profoundly insecure. They manifest a lot of that by their need to find something that they can latch onto that makes them feel less inferior, i.e. superior. And the success tends to be proportional to that feeling. Are you arguing to let airlines, for example, fail? Yes. Why? I mean, how does that make sense in the broader scheme of, of the economy? Because it's not because when you look at what it means, this is why I'm saying like this is a lie that's been purported by Wall Street. When a company fails, it does not fire their employees. It goes through a packaged bankruptcy. I'm not convinced that, you know, VCs of the past um, were frankly more than anything but just lucky. And uh, I wanted to really unpack that. And I think, I think they were mostly lucky because it was a small number of people um, allocating a huge amount of money to a small number of companies. And so the odds of winning were just so good. And again, the market beta was just so ferociously amazing. And then somewhere between the C and the D, the B guys are like, I, I'm pretty good at this. This is, I, this is easier than I, I should raise a second fund. Maybe I'll make it a slightly bigger fund. I should be doing bigger checks. Raises a B, right? Raises fund two, finds fund A's batch of second companies and says, hey, let's work together again. We are good at this together. On and on down the line. This is what's happening now. That a responsible government should do to react to So this. as a responsible investor, what do you do? Well, it's a really complicated question. So, you know, the problem is I have billions of dollars of private company equity. Right. I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just kind of holding, you know, billions uh, of dollars of uh, no wonder you dress like that. You're uh, you, you uh, billions of dollars of, of equity. It's true. Well, I mean, so I, it's awesome. true. I got exceptionally lucky. OK, uh, am I proud of it? Yeah. Is that a, a number inaccurate? Yeah, it's actually much, much better than that. OK. <laughs> Bitcoin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill, okay? We are entering a completely world of uncharted water Have right you now. made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. Across all of the vehicles that I control, we're approaching... Um, just a little under 100,000 coins. Um, and uh, I think we'll keep buying more. Um, you know, personally, I sort of have this belief that everybody in the world should probably have at least 1% of their assets in Bitcoin, um, not any other altcoin, specifically Bitcoin. And uh, I think that, the, that we're just at the beginning. There's about 150 people that run the world. Anybody who wants to go into politics, they're all fucking puppets, okay? <laughs> there are 150, and they're all men, that run the world, period, full stop. They control most of the important assets. They control the money flows. And these are not the tech entrepreneurs. 